Okay, well, I am going to show you in Excel today how to both calculate and how to interpret portfolio tracking error. But first, I want to remind you, if you want to subscribe to this channel, click on the icon in the lower right. Okay, so real quick on interpretation. Tracking error simply measures how much active risk you are taking relative to the benchmark. How risky are you relative to the underlying benchmark in which you are compared? And all it is, it's just the standard deviation of the excess returns versus the benchmark. And so more formally, you know what a standard deviation looks like. This is what it looks like. It's the square root of the variance. It's uh, up here, the terms are the return of the portfolio minus the return of the benchmark. This is how much you outperform or underperform every single month. You square that number. You sum up all of those squares. You divide by n minus 1, the number of periods, and then you take the square root of all of that. Well, at the end, we'll kind of figure out what that really means and how to interpret that number. But first, uh, let's go ahead and calculate this. We're going to hop into Excel. And what I've got here is a series of portfolio returns. This is for the Wilcox Fund, which is managed by the students at Suffolk University in Boston. So this is a live portfolio that goes back to May of 2014. Their underlying benchmark is the Standard & Poor's 400 return. This is a mid-cap benchmark. And I've went ahead and uh, calculated the active return every single month. So the very first month that the students began managing this fund, they underperformed the benchmark by 164 basis points. A couple months later, they started to outperform the benchmark. So this is just the difference between these two numbers here, the difference between portfolio return and the Standard & Poor's 400 return. So uh, if I wanted to do the brute force method, you know, let me just go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you a really easy method right at the end how to calculate all this. But let's just um, show you that the sum of the parts equals the whole. Basically, what I want to do is square these returns. So if I just go equals the active return, and then I do the caret sign to the second power, I'm just squaring that return. I hit Enter, and I'm just going to drag this all the way down to the bottom. And so this goes down to August of 2022. So let's go ahead and go to the bottom now and figure all this out. Okay. So. Sorry about that. So now if I just want to sum up the squares, remember I sum the squares. So I hit equals sum, and I'm going to hit there and go to the top. And I sum up that, and that equals 3.11. Now if I divide by n minus 1, now you can see there's 100 months. So n minus 1 is simply going to be equal to 99. So I'm just going to divide that by 99. That's n minus 1, and now I take the square root of all that. And that gives you the equation that we looked at on the prior page. So, oh, excuse me. I'm just going to take the um, square root of that equals square root of that number right there. And so my monthly standard deviation is 1.77%. Now, another way I could just more quickly do that is just take the active return right here. And of course, you know in Excel, you can just go equals standard deviation. So this is just a standard deviation of the excess returns, of the monthly excess returns, or the active returns. And it gives you the same number there. I'm just showing you here, just proving it to you that it gives you the same number. Now, that's a monthly standard deviation. Typically, in portfolio management, we quote things in annual terms. So to annualize this number, because it's monthly, some people think you just multiply by 12. But that's not correct. Because remember, the monthly standard deviation is a square root of a number. So I'm going to multiply it by the square root of time. In other words, I'm going to multiply this number by the square root of 12. That's a common mistake that people make. OK, oops, I'm just going to type in 12. And that gives me my annualized tracking error. And that's a number that is very often used in portfolio management. It's 6.13%. That is a very active portfolio. Typically, you think of an active manager as somebody who has you know, active risk greater than, say, 3 or 4%. You really get into to higher active space. So it's appropriate for this portfolio. So that's one thing to know. But how to interpret that? Well, that means that's a, that's a standard deviation. Okay, So you can think about it in any given year. A one standard deviation event is if this portfolio outperforms the benchmark or underperforms the benchmark by 6.13%. And if you think about normal distributions, you know that 66% of your observations are within one standard deviation. So there's a 66% probability in any given year that the excess return 
of the portfolio will, will be within 6% of the underlying benchmark. This just gives you a gauge as to how much difference you can expect relative to the benchmark in any given year. 6.13. Now, a uh, pure passive member, um, pure passive active manager, excuse me, a pure passive portfolio manager, who's somebody who's just managing an index fund, should expect a tracking or close to zero. Okay, and then you get the enhanced index managers, which are around one or two percent, and then quantitative active, active, and then concentrated fundamental managers will have active risk greater than say four or five percent. Okay, so that is how we interpret all this. I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel where I make finance fun for students. Thank you.